Solving ODEs is a hard and important problem, and lots and lots of people have been working on it for many, many years, and they've developed all sorts of interesting methods that are good for different kinds of problems. The workhorse method in nonlinear dynamics is called Runga Kutta. It's a bit like backward Euler in that it takes test steps out into the landscape to figure out what that landscape looks like in the downhill direction. But the power series that it uses to cobble together the approximation from the results of those test steps is a bit different than backward Euler's. The order of the method is the number of test steps that it uses. RK2 uses two test steps, RK3 uses three, and so on and so forth. The one we seem to use the most in my field is fourth order Rungakutta. I'm not going to go through the math, which gets a little bit ugly. Now, not hard, just ugly, with lots of subscripts to keep track of. If you're interested, that math is covered in my ODE notes, which are on the supplemental materials section of the Complexity Explorer webpage. Now, forward Euler, backward Euler, trapezoidal, and the Rungakutta clan are what are called single step methods. Separating these out is actually a little bit deceptive because forward Euler and backward Euler and trapezoidal are actually members of the RK clan. Forward Euler and trapezoidal are RK1 and RK2, respectively. Backward Euler is an implicit version of RK1. They work forwards from the current point on the dynamical landscape, just that single point. There's another family of ODE solvers that fits a curve to the last n points and uses that curve to extrapolate. These are called multi-step methods. The way these things actually work is more complicated than that simplified explanation that I just gave. Because what they do is they take a bunch of values of the slope of the landscape, they fit a function to that, and then they integrate that function and use that to extrapolate. If that was too hard to understand, don't worry about it. The main point of this is that these methods use a bunch of past points to figure out where to go in the future, whereas single-step methods only use a single point and information that's available there to go forwards. If you're interested in the gory details of how these methods work, I'll post a link on the supplementary materials page for you. There are lots and lots of multi-step ODE solvers, including the gear method, which is good for systems that have very, very different timescales, like the landscape I was drawing at the end of the previous segment, which was smooth in some places and then very wiggly in others. All right, so recall from the previous segment that it makes sense to adapt the time step as you go along in order to handle uneven landscapes. You can also adapt the method. That is, for example, you could use second-order Rungakata when things are smooth, and then move to fourth-order Rungakata if it turns out that second-order Rungakata isn't good enough. And you could tell that a time step wasn't adequate by taking a step with it and then taking two steps at half that distance and comparing the results. There are also special solvers for conservative systems, systems that have no friction, like orbits of bodies in the solar system, such as planets or spacecraft. These are called symplectic solvers. They calculate the energy at each step, and if they see that that energy is not being conserved, they add or subtract a little back in to make it balance. Now that's not quite right, but it gives you the idea. You only use these when you have a system that is non-dissipative, which is the same as saying it's Hamiltonian, which is the same as saying it's conservative. Using them in a dissipative system would be pretty silly, because what they do is at every step they'd be busily undoing the dissipation. Here's an example of an output of a symplectic solver on a problem involving three stars. There's a binary star coming in from the left and a single star coming in from the right. And they have this interesting chaotic interaction. This, by the way, is the last problem set in the semester-long version of this course that I teach at the University of Colorado to duplicate this picture. And here's the solution that one of the better students produced. I asked you to code up forward and backward Euler so that you'd get a feel for some simple solvers, how they work, and what's inside them. That will help you recognize when solvers break, which is critical. Coding up an adaptive solver, which you can base on any of the algorithms that we've talked about, is an interesting programming exercise if you like programming. But if slinging vectors and loops and subscripts isn't your cup of tea, don't worry. There are a ton of ODE solvers out there, many of which people have done a lot of pounding on, and they work very well. Here, for example, is 
the MathWorks page on ODEs and ODE solvers. This is the company that makes MATLAB. And here I'm showing you some of their ODE solvers. And you now know enough about ODE solvers to be able to understand this table. ODE45 is a Runge-Kutta method. This word stiff right here refers to systems that have a whole bunch of different timescales that are very, very different. Here's MATLAB's description of what a stiff problem means and which of its solvers are good for it. What this particular solver does is that it, it moves back and forth between using fourth and fifth order Runge-Kutta depending on how complex the landscape it encounters is. Now, if you do a web search for code for Runge-Kutta, you will find lots and lots of stuff. Some of this is good and some of it is not. Caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. Not everything that's on the net is right, and not everything that's right is on the net. If you're using code from the net, keep your ears and eyes and mind alert, because your answers may not be right. And in the next unit, I'll show you a little bit about how you can figure out whether the code that you've downloaded or that you've written yourself is actually working.